And I'll start with one of these. This is a 3 8 inch rebar. another one of my Cali Faces videos. I got a great video for y'all today. It's of a guy named Tony who's a bodybuilder, but not only is he a bodybuilder, he's also a pilot. So he's flying 757s, 767s, and all that. A very interesting guy. Here he is. Hey guys, I'm Tony Maxim. I'm a 47-year-old uh, gay airline pilot bodybuilder, so I break a lot of stereotypes. Um, I've been training for 28 years now flying airplanes for 32 years, so just still a very diverse type of a person. This is half inch rebar, so I don't know, let's try it, I feel good on my neck, let me get a towel on my head. Alright, this is half inch rebar. God, that was way easier than I thought. Fuck. How did you get into bodybuilding? Well, I had two dreams in life. Um, even when I was a little boy, I wanted to be a, a pilot. When I was seven years old, I remember uh, when I, watching an airplane fly overhead where we lived in New York and thinking we were, that's where I needed to be. I was in a tree with some friends, actually. And uh, I remember watching this jet go over and thinking, you know, this is as high as I've been in my whole life. That's where I want to be. And by eight years old, which would have been the 1972 Olympics, I remember watching that I was always really enthralled with the power lifters and the strength of just these big muscle men. So my dreams were very early rooted from when I was a little kid that I wanted to fly airplanes and I wanted to be a bodybuilder, or at least a big muscle man. So I was also enthralled with the idea of being very powerful. And uh, right now, we've got the Maxim Cam Lake first loaded with uh, 1845s and 235s so with the weight of the rack is about 900 pounds. What age were you when you started bodybuilding? Well, um, the flying started when I was 15. I got a job washing dishes to buy flying lessons when I was 15. And through high school, and then I soloed when I was 16. I mean, I flew an airplane without a flight instructor. Uh -huh. um, and then through high school, I was uh, actually went from kind of a chunky kid to a kind of a lean swimmer's body. I was actually on a swim team in uh, high school and did some track events. So I was more of a swimmer's body. I think I weighed about 165, 170 pounds in high school. When I went to college, my first year I was working my way through college and I started getting kind of chunky. And at the time, um, when I flew home to visit my family for the summer, my middle brother had opened a little gym in Pennsylvania. And so he got me into just the basics of training. That was 1983, when I was 19 years old. And I remember the first real weight workout I did with him, he killed me. Because we, did, we just overtrained so much that we trained arms. But I couldn't even work the manual windows in my old Ford I had. I didn't have power windows. I had to take the windows and crank them like this because my arms were, were so sore. So Billy, my middle brother, I owe, owe everything to him for getting me to start training. So I pack all this to get ready. And what I do is I have my pre and post workout shakes. This is for when I get to Maui tomorrow. This one's all pre-made. It's got uh, whey protein and banjo chain amino acids and glutamine and creatine and then I'll usually mix it with a Gatorade or a cranberry juice. And then I got my post-workout which has got dextrose and um, 
a hydrolyzed whey protein. Anyway. And you have to drink that every day? It's best, yeah. In 03, my uh, friends in Orlando pushed me to get on stage. I never really had aspirations to compete. Um, but I was looking so awesome, I guess, that my friends all pushed me on stage. So I started competing at age 39, and I did that for five years. So I only stopped competing a couple of years ago. So the flying came first before the bodybuilding. Yeah, I made the flying my career, um, and I, I never even really dreamed, like I said, that I really never aspired to get on stage. I'd had no dreams of being some big pro bodybuilder with a contract, you know, and winning the Olympia and things like that. So the career was definitely first uh, aviation, and I went to an aeronautical university in Daytona Beach. Um, and graduated summa cum laude, not to brag, but I was the number one graduate in my degree program. A lot of people stereotype that muscle men are, are stupid, you know, just big dum-dums, but so I was pretty smart, at least back then. And this is a, this is an airplane I flew for, well, I don't know, a lot of years out of Orlando. Delta had a base in Orlando. This is a 737-200, real old. Noisy, noisy jet. Like we used to call it the thunder jet. <laughs> so, or the smoker. What do you fly now? Now I fly a 757 and a 767. Wow. So you went from a four-seat Cessna to a 262-seat 767 now, but it took a lot of years to get there. Can anybody become an airline pilot? No. <laughs> you have to be. Um, they're they're a lot more lenient than they used to be. I think with. Um, physical requirements that used to require 2020 vision. Um, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist, but um, it does take a certain person to be an airline pilot. Um, it, it's kind of a combination of uh, science and art to me. It's a scientific thing to do, but there's a lot of, there, landing an airplane is, is a little bit of an art too to it. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. So it, to me, it's kind of uses both sides of your brain. Do people at the at the airport know that you're also a bodybuilder? They probably can well, tell by looking at you, right? Yeah. Uniform. Yeah. <laughs> the TSA agents always have something smart to say to me, and I very often hear people. I just had someone yesterday say, "You know, what do you do? Lift the airplanes?" <laughs> and I say, "Well, sometimes it feels like I'm carrying that airplane, yeah. but um, yeah. So it's hard to hide this even in a uniform." Then it's something to get into the I guess part. Oh, so, oh, right at 20, so. <laughs> when I started this, the competing, my only goal was to get on stage. My friend, a good friend of mine, Jim Adams in Orlando, he started competing at age 50. And he's the one who really pushed me on stage. And I thought if Jim can do it by 50, I'll do it before I turn 40. So I was 39, and my first goal was just to do it. And I had so much fun. It was it was like a natural high. I remember every time I go on stage, um, you're standing on the, in the background waiting for them to call you. And every time it's the same for me. I get this rush and I and you're all sweaty and hot because you've been pumping up and you're oily, you know, you're oil. But I kind of go like this to my hair and I feel like I'm at a party or at a dance club and I just go out on stage and I just have fun. Over here are some bodybuilding trophies. This is my favorite, this big guy here. This was the overall title of, I don't even remember, in 2004, I think. Anyway, it was really cool. Yeah. This was Dennis's trophy. His label fell off, but that's my partner's trophy, and the rest are mine. So I was anywhere from first place to fifth in some of these. And heavyweight or super heavyweight, depending on what year I was competing. I bet when you're out, nobody really tries to mess with you, right? <laughs> Probably don't have any problems out there. My friends call me the gentle giant. I really am a, a very, I think I'm a very sweet person and I'm very, uh, I, I think that we all should treat each other, uh, I don't know why I get too philosophical, but and I think all through humanity, we should all treat each other just equally and like we would expect others to treat us. And so I'm kind of responsive. If someone's nice to me, I'm super nice back. But if somebody screws with me, <laughs> I have a very strong <laughs> I say I actually have a very strong fight reflex and a very weak flea reflex, you know, the fight or flea response. Mm -hmm. So if somebody really messes me, then I, I scares myself how aggressive I can be. But so generally people, no, people don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs>